Hi everyone, there's been some really cool stuff happening in the Blender community recently. So in this video, I'm just going to run you through some of my favorite things I've been keeping my eye on. And hopefully you might discover a new tool or some educational content that might help you out. So let's jump in. First of all, you might remember I did a video about the amazing human generator add-on for Blender, which is probably the most high effort add-on I've ever seen for the software. It was very well received, there was a high demand for the add-on, so they've continued working on it. So they are currently working on version 2, which is in beta, and the beta files are accessible to everyone that has a copy of the add-on, so you can get that from your Blender market downloads. Some new features which will be available in this new version include a fax-based facial rig system, an experimental mode which lets you push values past their traditional limits, a texture switching system which lets you change the different types of textures so there's a default and uncensored textures as well so then there's a length change system for the body you can scale different body parts independently you can now hold control while switching through different tabs to keep the hair children enabled so if you want to keep that preview running you can there's a new adaptive outfit and hair system so it fits the bodies better there's a new extras menu for different types of operations and saving presets there's a texture baking system if you want to kind of export the textures for the character to any other software you'll also be able to add modifiers without losing Using shape keys, you can save the creation phase human as the starting human, save custom shape keys, custom hairstyles and outfits, turn meshes to clothing, and there's new preference options. So as you can see, they're working on quite a lot of things for the next version. So if you want to give that beta a try, go ahead. If you don't have the add-on already, you can pick it up and then those files will be accessible to you. I should also note as well, they have a Discord server if you want to engage in discussions, talk to the creators, provide feedback, and show them what kinds of things you're making. If you're interested in procedural material creation or the mathematics behind building shaders in Blender, then Charon from Just 3D Things has been working on a vector math masterclass. So their first video is out now, which is about basic vector math functions. When I was watching it, I was extremely impressed with the amount of effort that went into making this video because as he's explaining the different concepts behind vector math, there's so many visual demonstrations, some of which are animated as well. And I think he made some of those visual demonstrations with nodes as well. So it just goes to show that he really knows what he's talking about about. So if you are interested in learning about how to build patterns, control textures and build procedural materials and all sorts of other things using vector math in the Blender shader nodes, then please go and give it a watch because it's a brilliant video. And there will also be more coming in the future. Now, of course, with geometry nodes being such a hot topic in the Blender community right now, there are so many people doing all kinds of really cool demonstrations. One of my favorite creators that you'll probably know if you've been around on this channel for a while is BBBN19, and they tend to share a lot of their demonstrations on Gumroad. One of the recent ones, which I think is probably one of my favorites so far, is this kind of Lego assembly animation, and I'll probably put it up on the screen here as well. As you can see, it's got all these kind of Lego pieces and studs coming together to form this shape. And he's currently experimenting with different methods of converting objects into these kind of Lego styles. But I think it's a really cool demonstration and it's available for free on Gumroad. So if you're interested in diving into these different case studies and projects with geometry nodes, then it's definitely worth downloading and taking a look. And just as a side note, they are one of the nicest people I've ever spoken to. So if you do enjoy their content, then consider leaving a tip. Speaking about geometry nodes, there's been some interesting scattering tools that have become available. So I'll first of all mention the G-Scatter add-on, which is from the creator of Grasswalt. What G-Scatter lets you do is basically make use of the Geometry Nodes toolset to scatter whatever objects you like around the scene. You can use your own custom objects or ones that are packaged with the add-on. It's entirely up to you, but it is free. And I think the add-on also serves a double purpose of being an advertisement for the full Grassworld package, if you're interested in that kind of nature content. Unfortunately, I haven't been added to the affiliate list for Grassworld yet, so we're going to move on to Scatter. So Scatter... <laughs> So Scatter is a fantastic toolset for bringing high level scattering functionality to Blender. So these are features that may already be present in other 3D softwares, but the main aim of Scatter is to bring as much scattering functionality as is possible into Blender. And there really is just a crazy amount of features. If you take a look on their website, they have a kind of comprehensive manual and series of tutorials showing you kind of what you can do. There really is an impressive amount of functionality. But a key point I want to draw your attention to is they've been working on this manual distribution mode, which lets you kind of scatter objects around the scene again, so a very similar tool, but they have so many different modes for doing this. I'm only showing a few of them in these images here, but there's a video breakdown that shows you all the different things you can do. I was very impressed with how this manual distribution mode lets you not only just like spray things into the scene, but there's also pressure sensitivity for tablets. Like yeah, they went through the effort of putting that into it. There's a path brush as well, so if you want to do fencing and all kinds of other stuff. It's fantastic for scattering nature objects because there's this kind of object index attribute one, where if you wanted to change the type of object that was actually already scattered down, you can do that easily. So it's literally just like painting objects into your scene. So I think that would be fantastically useful for people. 
There is an open beta as well for Scatter 5, so if you want to give these features a try, you can do that. Go to the website, take a look, scroll down, have a look at the videos, explore all the features, and Scatter version 5, we have a whole host of other features which I haven't already talked about, should be available at the beginning of November. Now I don't want to fanboy over the add-on too much, but it really is fantastic for people doing like environments and landscape design, because they have this really cool masking system where you can kind of isolate different areas of an object. So you have mask controls for altitude, slope, curvature, water flow, orientation, camera distance culling. They even have like some kind of LOD system to simplify objects in the scene to make it more performant. Paint layer, Boolean, Bezier, sharpness, normal, vertex, colors, procedural, texture, shadow casting, particle proximity, object collision, Bezier, 2D area, UV image boundary, you can get edge and face data as well. And there's just so much more. They're going crazy with it. I genuinely can't keep up with the features. Literally, as I've been making and preparing this video, they've been showing off new features on Twitter. So if you're interested, give it a look. So our friends at CG Boost have been working on a fantastic suite of new content. If you've been around for a while, you know that we love CG Boost. They provide a lot of stuff to the community, both free and paid, but really, really high quality educational content. First of all, I want to point you to this video by Juan Hernandez on the CG Boost channel, which is introduction to UDIMs. If you don't know what UDIMs are, the worst possible explanation I can give, like really oversimplified, is you can have different UV islands on multiple textures. So as you can see, you can kind of have like, you know, 8K textures on one part of the mesh, 4K textures on a different part, etc. There's quite a complex system. It's a really good thing to know about. And really this 20 minute-ish video will explain it in a much better way than I ever could. So it's definitely worth having a look. And of course it's on YouTube, so it's completely free to watch. Martin Kleckner, who has been working on the Master 3D Environments in Blender course, so this is a paid one, has added a new Arctic section to the course, so you can learn how to make these kind of really cool Arctic scenes. So the different sections of this chapter are Arctic reference images, creating the glacier base, skewing the glacier, sculpting the glacier, snow materials, ice materials, blending in transparency, adding translucent water, finishing the scene, rendering the Arctic scene, and Arctic scene compositing. So he really does go through every single step. On top of this, he has also added a new basic section to the course for anyone that already has it. Talking about node wrangler, setting up HDRIs, camera clipping issues, more notes about shader nodes, particle setups, and rendering tips for heavy scenes. So I gave this course my high recommendation back in a video talking about how to make landscapes in Blender, and it's still at the very top of my list for the recommendation. So if you're interested in learning how to make landscapes, then Martin is definitely the person to go to. And you don't really need to take my word for it. All you need to do is just take a look at some of his other work and you'll know he knows exactly what he's talking about. So Zach, Zacharias Reinhardt, the person behind the Blender Launchpad course has been working on this new Cubic Worlds course. This has been really fascinating to me because he's been working on this on and off for a while. And though I'm sure he would explain it in a very different way, the way that I would interpret this course is that it's a very different approach to learning Blender. Basically, he's showing you how you can make beautiful scenes and animations with low poly objects. So how to make environments and characters and all sorts of other things using a very cubic style. I think something fantastic about this is it goes to show that you don't need to be an expert modeler to make beautiful artwork. When you're limiting the detail you're putting into objects, it really gets you to focus on composition more. So I feel like there's a little bit of genius behind this course. So he'll show you how to make kind of beautiful scenes like this and how to animate them as well. There's different chapters available, but it is an early access, so there's more parts coming soon. For example, there's another part coming up which will talk about characters and machines and how to rig them and animate them. So this is a paid course if you're interested in checking it out to see maybe a different approach to learning Blender and how to make artwork in Blender, then it's definitely worth checking out. Anyway, these are just a few things that I wanted to draw your attention to, things that I thought were really high quality and that you would be able to get some really good value out of, tools and educational content, free and paid. So if you do want to check them out, I'll leave the links below. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm sorry the pace of video slowed down a bit, but thanks for bearing with me while I get other things sorted out. Consider joining our Discord server to take part in discussions and art challenges and share other news pieces. You can also follow me on social media if you want to keep up to date with information and even sign up to my Patreon so your name will appear at the end of videos. So thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.